Well, all right, here we are once again. It is Move Monday. I'm Pastor Bobby D. Hamilton from the Great Friendship Church in Sweet Sugar Land, Texas. You see my face on a, on a Monday, you know it's Move Monday. Let me begin by giving a big old shout out to Sister Rachel White. Rachel White. I conducted a, I officiated a, a wedding last night and the Sister Rachel White was at the wedding. And she let me know that she watches Move Monday every Monday. And she got so convicted, she said, because she thinks that I'm, a, I'm encouraging you just to get out and run. Everybody be a runner. I'm not encouraging everybody to be a runner. We all can't be runners, nor should you be a runner. Not everyone. I'm just saying move. But Sister Rachel White, I thank you for support. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for reminding me that everybody's not a runner. <laughs> but I am saying that everyone can move in some capacity, in some way. And so I want to just thank you. And all you others who be nearby you, you never seen me. I've never seen you. But you watch every Monday. I want to thank you for being so faithful to the Move Monday broadcast. And I just want to encourage you to move. It's that Monday, and I'm going to tell you to move. And whatever your move may be, it's a plethora of things to choose from. You may choose what works best for you. No condemnation, no shade, no hateration, none of that. Just simply saying we're going to encourage one another. This is a this is a very broadcast of encouragement. It's saying we simply want to encourage one another to do something to the temple that God has given to us. And that may be cycling, that may be swimming, that may be walking your dog, that may be pushing the stroller with your grandkids, that may be just simply going up and down your flights of stairs at your home, that may be doing a few push-ups, a few sit-ups, maybe a few calf raises. It may be simply going out to say, I'm going to make 13 trips to the garage. Whatever it is, you choose what it is. And whatever you choose to do, let us know. Matter of fact, that'd be a cool thing to do right now, is to let everyone online know right now, what are you doing today to move? What have you set aside? What have you purposed in your heart? Some of you at work right now, you, and you don't move till after the work is over. But what do you plan on doing that's going to allow you to get the blood pumping? That's going to allow you to be able to say, I'm trying to take off some of these caloric intake. I'm trying to, to be someone that's trying to get fit. I'm trying to get fixed. Someone said it best. I'm trying to get my sexy back, Pastor. I understand. Go ahead and get your sexy back. And whatever mechanism you use to get your sexy backs, let us know. Encourage the audience. Encourage the group to let us know. Because maybe there's someone or someones who also have decided this will be the year. This will be the season. This will be the day that I start trying to get my sexy back. Whatever it may be. Maybe trying to get back to your high school prom weight. Or maybe just simply just trying to get down from wearing a size 36 to wearing a size 32. Or maybe you're trying to go down from being a size 18 to being a size 8. Whatever it may be, you choose your goal. I, I don't choose it for you. I just want to encourage you. I've been blessed to be able to get in shape. And that's a wonderful thing to be in. And I want to encourage other people to get in shape. But the definition of being shape, it varies. I'm not your physician. I'm not your strength coach. I'm not your, your guru. But I am someone that said, listen, if the Lord allowed it to happen in my life, in my body, it can happen in your life and your body. It's not enough to just simply just to sit at the table and graze. It's not enough to just simply drink these, these high energy drinks that are filled with so much sugar and caffeine. It's not enough to say one day, one day, I'm gonna get in shape. No, today could be the day. It's a series of one step after another and you can do it, we can do it, and we can do it together. Now, while you're contemplating what you're gonna do for your move Monday, I want to remind you about the service yesterday, the wonderful service at the, at the Great Friendship Church. I've been in this series talking about following the sun. Go to YouTube and pull it down. I preached yesterday talking about, I'm going to do what he said. The premise of the series was rooted out of Matthew 28, 16 through 20, what we call the Great Commission, which other, others call the Great Omission. If anything that we omit is that passage. Because what Christ gave us is his last will and testimony, according to Matthew's gospel account, before he left planet Earth. And, and what it simply was saying, I want you to go and make disciples. I want you, who are a follower of me, to go and catch other people that they can be followers also. And I told you that it just mesmerized my mind to think that these disciples who failed Jesus in so many ways and so many times, and yet they moseyed on back to that mountain to meet him exactly like he said. And because they showed up, he used them. And we stand here today because they got used by God. And I'm saying to someone that's viewing it right now, we have failed the Lord at times. 
We haven't done what we're supposed to have done. We have said we would do it and we didn't do. We said we could do it and we couldn't do. We've done a whole lot of things. Yet the Lord is still calling us. I still want to use you. His plan is still people reaching people. So today, here's the question. Because you're someone who say you love the Lord. You're someone who says, I follow Christ. You're someone who says, I'm growing in Christ. You're someone who says that, guess what? God has manifested so much in my life, and I'm growing, and I'm, I'm, I'm highly blessed, and I'm favored. You know all those great cliches that we use, but here's the question. Who are you investing in? The blessing that you have gotten is your blessing, is your blessing a dead-end blessing, which means that it comes in, but nothing goes out. Or, 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 or is your blessing a great freeway, a great interstate in which there's traffic that goes both ways? God wants to be able to use you, the blessing he gave you, to bless somebody else. So guess what? All you have learned, all you have gleaned, all you've been able to, to recite, all you've been able to capture in your years of being a Christian, there is someone right now in your office who needs you to grab them and to pour into them that they also could become a follower of Christ. It doesn't mean someone who's unsaved. Someone unsaved needs one thing, the gospel. But after they get saved, that they need other things. Somebody in your office right now is struggling with how to be a man. You can pull them aside and disciple them in manhood. Somebody's struggling in marriage. You can pull them aside in how to be a, a married person that glorifies God. Somebody's struggling, they're dating. They're dating, but they're dating all wrong. And they don't understand that what they do in dating is going to show up in the marriage. You can show them how to date from a biblical, from a godly perspective. Maybe there's someone right now who's struggling with grief. They've lost a spouse. They've lost a sibling. They've lost a parent. And they're grieving. You can help them, Lord, how to, through the grieving process, disciple through the grieving process. The issue is, who will you grab? It's not right for you to be so blessed, so highly favored. And yet you have decided that you won't, you won't pour into somebody else. Jesus gave us one last will and testimony. One last command according to Matthew's gospel account. One imperative. One command. One instruction. One cadence call. Make disciples. And he's saying wherever you may be, make disciples. So there's someone in your office. There's someone in your ride to work. There's someone in your family, in your bloodline. There's someone on your ball team. There is someone who's a part of your daily chat line. When will you decide, God, I'm going to humble myself, sacrifice myself, and going to bless somebody else? Well, I know what they say. Pastor, I don't know all that. I'm afraid they may ask me something. I'm afraid I may mess somebody up. I don't know how to do it. I'm just trying to get myself together. I'm just trying to be able to kind of make it one more day. Great! You're making it one more day. But do you care enough that they make it one more day? It's not as complex. It's not as high-minded. It is not as, as grandiose as we make it to be. It's a very simple process. I trust God through the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm growing. And because I'm growing, as he grows me, I'm going to make sure that my growth also impacts someone else to grow also. That's all it really is. It's about simply doing life together in such a way that the life of Christ is reflected and imitated in somebody else. So who's your person today? On your move Monday, as you're moving your body, as you're moving your torso, as you're moving your calves, as you're moving your hip flexors, as you're moving your calisthenics, as you're doing your yoga, and you're doing hot yoga and cold yoga and lukewarm yoga, the question becomes, who are you also hooking up? God wants you. God wants me. God wants us not just to be good church folk, but to be Christ folks who care enough and love enough to invest in somebody else. It's not enough. For you to hog the goodness and the grace and the blessing of God, God wants you to pass it on. So make up your mind today. I'm going to make a phone call. Make up your mind today. I'm going to reach out. Make up your mind today. I'm going to decide today that, Lord, I'm going to pour into somebody else as I've been poured into. And God's going to bless you and God's going to keep you. So go move. And when you're finished moving, make sure that you mosey on back up, up that mountain, and do what the Lord called you to do. And that's go and make a disciple. Get on your way. I'll see you Wednesday night at the Friendship Church, a place to begin again. Isn't it a great day? Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for health and strength. 
Thank God for a new day. Move, 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 move. What are you doing, Pastor? I'm just trying to encourage somebody to move. Let me get out of here. It's hot out here.